I get so much love from pretty fly bitches. The you know the bum bitches be hating. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I don't know why I just clapped like that, but um, welcome back to my channel. I'm Day Paris, and today I want to do like a little life update, kind of like not like just really because I feel like there's a lot of things that I haven't said. There's a lot of updates that I haven't really got into and I just want to talk about these things because I want to tell my future self that all the things that I'm talking about in this video is going to help you, it's, going, it's, it's for a good reason. Um, you are, to my future self, you are strong, you are beautiful, you are that bitch, okay? Um, so future self, when you have millions of dollars in your bank account, when you're successful, you're going to look back at this video and be grateful for where you are and everything that you've been through because you're going to be able to help people, inspire people, and to let them know that whatever you go through, you will overcome it and you are strong and no weapon forms you against you shall prosper. <laughs> okay, so... In this video, I want to just, like in the past couple vlogs, vlogs that I did, um, I was telling y'all how I lost all my stuff, I lost my car, I lost all my clothes, like I lost my big MacBook, I even lost my college graduation degree, like literally my degree is gone. So. Just I lost everything that I have that I worked so hard for in LA for the, all those years that I've been in LA that I gathered. Everything is gone, got taken away. So, and then I come back to Philadelphia with basically nothing, nothing to really show but my memories. But and it's so funny because you know how when you. See, I was the type of person in LA, like, when I would be around celebrities or I would be doing all these amazing things, I didn't really post about it. So, um, I feel like on the outside looking in, people probably, I don't know, they probably just, it's like if you didn't post about it, it didn't happen. But I've had so many great things happen in LA. So many crazy things happen in LA. Good things, bad things, but... Um, I just hope that I promise to really post more good things. Like, just post, because I usually think that's, like, it's cheesy. Like, it's thirsty, it's clout chasey. So, I didn't really post stuff like that. Um, but if you if your attentions are good, it's okay to post. It's okay to, it's okay to be private, but if it's your personal thing, it's okay to um show people and it, it's in those things you post it's for inspiration it's inspirational purposes only right so i feel like this next chapter i'm gonna really post more um what's going on in my life or you know like really it is not even to like that's why when um i seen that's why I, now i like i will post now and you will see it like on my Instagram. So, and I feel like it's only right to post, I'm from Philly, so it's only right to post somebody, like the biggest artist from Philly. Like that's the only right, you know, that's only right. So, the vibe time and everything works out for a reason. And I still believe in privacy and I still believe in um, respecting people's privacy, so. And I'm still believing in having integrity and you know being a real ass bitch. So I really don't care if people think I really don't care if people think, oh, since I didn't post stuff, it didn't happen, or I didn't really post about my life a lot in LA. Like the good thing. I was just living in the moment. Like most of the times, all the good shit that happened, I was literally living in the freaking moment, okay? But I feel like Keep those memories, take those photos, take those videos, stay high, network, you know, so. But anyway, 
I feel like as I talk about this phase, I feel like as I talk about this stuff, I want to um, do my makeup because I, I haven't done this in a long time. So I feel like I should just do it. Let me at least like put this in front of me so I can freaking see because I can't really see from over there. Um, but anyway, let's see. Um, oh my goodness. I don't really want to take my time in doing this too. So, what do I want to talk about first? What do I really want to talk about first? Um... Um, sorry, y'all. I just started thinking about Tyler Perry, right? So y'all know. So as y'all know, or maybe y'all may not know, me and Tyler Tyler Perry had the same last name, Perry, right? So in my head, he my uncle, okay? <laughs> in my head, he my uncle, okay? So I um I was just thinking about his journey and stuff. How he would talk about how when he was homeless and things like that, and you know, and it's like, I feel like people who haven't been through stuff like that, they wouldn't really, they wouldn't really know how to, they don't, they don't really, wouldn't really understand your story or what you've been through, but, um, hold on, y'all. But yeah, people, sorry about the background, it's pretty loud, but, um, I feel like people wouldn't really understand like his journey is so inspirational, so deep, and it's like it's. It, I, like I said, if you haven't never been through homelessness, if you never been through abandonment or you know abuse and stuff, it's kind of hard to understand because you've never been through it. It's kind of hard to, but like I really relate to his story. I really love, 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 love this story. So, and I even tried to watch his documentary and I couldn't watch it. It was too deep for me. I couldn't. Like, I mean, maybe I'll watch it years later. Like, like the whole thing. Because I watched some of it, but I couldn't really watch the whole thing because it was too... Ooh, it hit a nerve, okay? Very triggering. I just couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Um... But anyway, where do I want to start? Oh my goodness, where do I want to start? Um, I feel really... I feel... And I know... My... Um, I know my... What do I want to call it? I know my red flower is about to come on, so I know that's why I'm like tearing up. Because <laughs> I only, every time I cry, it's because it's during that time where my red flower is coming on, and I'm like super more emotional, or it's like I'm concerned. Because you, because I don't really cry. Something happens, I move on. I just adapt to the situation, and I just keep it with y'all. Cry, hold things in. So. That's why I kind of I kind of look forward to when my red flower come on because it gives me a time a chance to cry. <laughs> so funny, but anyway, so I'm in sharpness. Skip over this because I. <sighs> so, um, where do I want to start? It's so 
loud. I feel so bad. It's so loud. I don't know. But I feel like I just want to I just want to record this right now. Even though it's loud. If you're meant to see this and you see it, you can hear it. Whatever. So, I told y'all. Okay, so I'm just going to tell y'all this a little bit. Before I left, before I left for, um, California, I'm from Philadelphia, before I left from California, um, my mom used to kick me out a lot and I would live house to house to house to house. Some people would let me live with them, some people wouldn't let me live with them. I'm talking about family. Um, and that's a part of the reason why I moved to California to start my start a new life because it's like I've been through so much in Philly. Um, but anyway, I so basically I was homeless in Philly. Too. I was homeless in Philly. So I I um. So, as y'all know, I told y'all in the past vlog that I lived with this Persian guy. And it was other girls, it was other women in the house too. So, at that time, at that time, I lived there. Um, he was very, like, he would take my money. And this is during COVID. I told y'all. Looking past vlogs, y'all would know. But I'm going to just be reiterated again. He would take my, this was during COVID, right? We lost, all, everybody lost their jobs. Now, I originally moved there and to, to rent a room because, one, I didn't even think about Airbnbs at that time. I don't even know why I did. And I felt like, Renting a room would be cheaper than Airbnb. Um, also, I wanted to save. I wanted to save money. I wanted to use most of my money to put into at that time my music. So I wanted to use the money that I did, like all the money I had left over, um, while me renting that room is because. I wanted to save that money, use the money for studio time, focus on my money, focus on my content, put money into my YouTube channel, things like that, invest in myself. So a lot of times, people get it misconstrued that all beautiful women, they rely on men to do everything, or rely on men to pay their bills, rely on men to do all that things. It's like, no. The whole time I lived in LA, I took care of myself. Nobody was paying my bills. I wasn't prostituting. I wasn't being a whore. I wasn't fucking for money. I wasn't sucking dick for money. I wasn't doing nothing. I was I was going to work at my nine to fives, working my ass off to take care of myself. And that's what I did. The whole 10 years I was there, 11 years I was there. So, um... This, I'm not even gonna be serious about doing this makeup for real, for real. I'm just doing it because just be doing something in the video. But anyway, um, so I was at that house during COVID. He would say all these nasty things to me. I had to call the police. Or hell, several times I have so many police reports. I still have them. Um, it's in one of my purses, but I still have. Well, I have pictures of all the police reports. Yeah, police. Um, all the times that I had to call the police on my landlord. Um, he would eat my food, steal my food, um, break into my bedroom when I had a lock on it. Um, cut off the shower, the water, so I won't shower, lock the bathroom door, so I won't shower, put cameras in the hallway where my room, my bedroom is, so he can, like, watch me. It was a lot. It was a very, like, very, like, abusive behavior that I was going through. On top of him just keeping, I was extremely disgusting. And, um, I was born so many times to move out that house by my other roommates, but... 
I didn't see what was going on because I was like I I was working a lot. I had two jobs, three jobs, working a lot, right? Before this is before COVID was going on. So when COVID happened, that's when I got to see the true colors, and that's when all that stuff that I just named started happening. Um, he he tried to raise the rent on me. I was not trying to pay. How are you trying to raise the rent on people during COVID when? COVID is don't even COVID you don't you can't even have a job doing COVID so it was nuts okay very greedy very um but shout out to the COVID relief so fun but anyway if you know you know um for for the landlord's sake they all the landlords got their money okay they what they had to do so I left that house I had to figure out a way how I was going to escape this house of this abuse, right? This person calling me a ghetto. This person say, saying racial slurs, black B, scum of the ground, saying my mama a whore. Don't even know my fans. Don't know nothing about me. Never even brought niggas in a house. Never brought nobody in a house. Never fucked nobody in a house. Not like, I'm not, literally all I did was work okay i barely had a social life so it was just rude it was just like and then covid so you know during that if you're going through mental abuse um during covid you it's like you know the extreme of that of dealing with covid having to stay in the house dealing with that no work financial um financial hardship and then having to deal with your landlord being abusive, that was a lot. That was a lot. So, and if, and you know how I know God is real? It's because God brought Cindy into my life, okay? Into my life doing it. It was like, the, it was so bad. It was so bad. Like, it was so bad. But God brought into my life a miracle a miracle okay that's how i know god loves me on top of a lot of things but but cindy my my dog okay my little chihuahua who i love so much who really like really changed like really helped me in my life so even to this day so, anyway, I was trying to see if she was around me, but no, she was over there. But, um, that's how I know, even though God is real. Because even during this time of me getting mentally abused by my landlord and financially abused, and it was so crazy because during that time where I was trying to move, I had I got I gave somebody three thousand dollars. They scammed me out of my three thousand dollars. It was crazy, 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 crazy. Still haven't gotten that money back. Just don't deal with people who just do things the right way, okay? But anyway, deal with people who do things the right way, okay? That's all I can say about that. But, um, so, I figured out a way to escape, escape that house and that abuse because I couldn't take it anymore. It got, it became too, I'm a strong person, but I just, it came to a sense where constant mental, constant abuse and verbal abuse, I'm saying verbal abuse, um, and me being in LA by myself with no family around, no friends around, nobody to protect me is a whole different thing, okay? So, and this man, grown ass man, used to come into my face like this close into my face, yelling at me to the top of his lungs. Really like trying to challenge me and stuff like that, but it was nuts. Like, sometimes I be thinking like, hmm. But, <laughs> so I figured out a way how to escape 
escape this house. So I was like, okay, how am I going to escape this house? Mind you, my BMW got, re just got, um, Yeah, my BMW just got, um, it had got, a, a tree fell on my BMW, so it was crazy. So I had to figure out how I'm going to get another car, so now I got a rental car. And then I was like, okay, how am I going to get out, I got to get out of this house. I think so swiftly, I'm like, I, I think it's survival mode, like, I got to hurry up with it because of my childhood. And like I said, of me always gotta figure shit out, figure out how I'ma get, um, how I'ma survive and escape. So, I literally left, um, I left the house. I was like, okay, let me do Uber. Cause, I mean, let me do Lyft because you can still work, make some money, right? So I left, packed all my stuff, put all my stuff in storage, got in that car, got Fendi, and what we do, I worked, I worked, literally I worked, we felt, we slept in the car, worked, slept in the car, worked, slept in the car. So that was, that was my life. So, but then I realized, okay, I can't save no money. No, I can't save no money to get a, uh, get my apartment. Because all the money is going back into the rental, the gas, the rental fees, the daily, like, you know, you got to pay. It's just, I literally only had enough food to buy Fendi food and me food, right? And gas. It's to pay back the rental. Like, that's it. It was no room, no room to get a hotel. Um, did I get a hotel? I probably got a hotel, like, once or twice, but I could not afford that, okay? You know how much hotels are in California? And you know how much Airbnbs are in California a day? Over $100 for one day. Um, so, yeah, we was in the car, sleeping in the car, and then this guy, this guy, I'm, I don't even think I'm gonna do my makeup, this guy, I feel so bad, but this guy, he, he, um, hit my car, my rental, hit my rental, and then lift don't play about car crashes and car accidents whatever it wasn't even a car crash he hit my car blah, blah. they took the car so now what now me and Fendi is outside sleeping on the ground okay sleeping on the ground mind you i had reached out to family reached out to my mom reached out i didn't get no help so, me and Fendi was just outside. I was just outside. I would go. I had a whole schedule, okay, of how I'm gonna make the hell out, how I can make the days go by fast. Um, and during the summertime, California, hundred degrees outside. Okay, how are we going to survive out here? How are we going to get some air? So my so my puppy won't freaking die of heat and exhaustion, and so I won't either. So I had a whole schedule, y'all. I had a whole schedule like it was crazy. So I was sleeping outside. We were sleeping outside for a long time, for like months and months and months and months and months and months and months sleeping outside. So um. Um, oh my god, I'm headed in. Just think about it, just just makes me exhausted. Um, so oh, and so I couldn't make money from Lyft anymore. So I was still making but then I was doing my um tarot business. I was in my tarot business and I was making money from my tarot business. So I'll make here money here and there for my tarot business. Cause you know being an entrepreneur it takes a lot of work you know it's it's a marathon okay so i would make money from that and that's how i would like get food eat get finished some food so by the grace of god okay so but it wasn't enough so um but it was just good enough for what it was fine whatever 
I'm grateful for it. So I so one day okay, so I literally can't pay my storage anymore. My storage, I'm like, oh my god, my storage. I I was on the last day of me trying to buy my pay for my storage or they gonna throw all my stuff out. So I was I went up to the place, got some of my clothes, try to get my clothes so I could sell my clothes so I could pay for my storage. Storage is like one ninety something. So paid for all my storage. Um, got my clothes to pay for my storage to go to like a um those places where you can sell your clothes. So I went to one of those places to sell my clothes. They would not buy my clothes. They gave me like twenty dollars. So it was that was like the worst day. It was like the that day was the worst worst day. Okay. So I'm going back to my I'm going back to my storage to put all my clothes back into my storage. I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm going through. I guess like it's over. Like my stuff is done. It's done. Like no more. So um that time. That time where, so I was on the side, I was getting off the bus, me and Fendi, big old, big old suitcase, me and Fendi, big old suitcase, on the bus, get off the bus with Fendi, big old suitcase, somebody pull up on me, right, mind you, I told y'all, I'm not a prostitute, I'm not a whore, I don't sell pussy, none of that shit, so, somebody pull up on me, and I'm just like, I'm exhausted. I'm stressed out. So I'm just like, I'm in my last resort. Like, okay. They like how this person is like, hi, how are you? Basically trying to talk to me. <laughs> Basically trying to talk to me. And I'm just like, I'm just like, um, because even though I was homeless, I still looked nice. Like, I'm not, like, I still took care of myself as best as I could to look presentable and look nice. Like, and I say look nice, I mean just like a shirt. Like a little shirt and, like, in like tights or something like that. Like, literally. So, um, so, I'm sorry if it's loud in the background, but. So I um so this person was trying to talk to me and I was like something told me to just tell him that I was homeless. I was like, I'm homeless and I need help with paying for my storage. I was like, Can you pay for my storage? It's like one ninety something, one seventy something. So he was like he was like, What's your name? I told him my name. He's like, Let me see your ID because I look young, right? So I show him my I show him my ID. So okay. Um, so he he he's like, I have to go get money. So he went to go to he went to go get money. I thought he wasn't coming back, first of all. And I'm like, I thought he was not coming back. Like this man, I'm like, I know he I don't think he's coming back. But he actually came back. He actually he really came back. Like he really came back. So he came back. And then I feel like, and then he paid for some of the story. He paid for like half of it. And he was like, okay, um, I'm going to pay for the rest um, in a few more days. So I thought, okay, thank you. I was so grateful, still so grateful to this day. So grateful for his help um, and his kindness and generosity. So he paid for my storage. And he was like, okay, so just come with me. You can come to my house. First of all, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. So I'm just like, oh my God. I'm like, oh, oh my God. I hope this man don't rape me. I hope this man don't kidnap me, kill me, whatever, whatever. I was just so nervous. But he was really chill. He was very, he was very chill. So, yeah. So, um, I, so I went to his house. We went to his house, everything. I stayed at his house. He didn't try to have sex with me. I stayed at he I stayed at his house. He wasn't really there that much. So I would be at his house. I was there for a long time. I was there for like a month or three weeks or something like that. 
and I was trying to, but during that time, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to work? I'm like, okay. Um, and trust me, he has a really nice house. He pulled up in a G-Wagon. So, um, so yeah. Not even a house, a mansion. So, I, um, so, I literally was like, okay, because y'all know the, the lift thing, they took the car. So, I'm like, well, how am I? So, I was like trying to figure out how can I get another rental car. So, um, I think I had, did I have, I had, no, I, did I have, I didn't have money left. Um, how did I, oh, I think I got money from one of my tarot clients to pay. So, I found this app where you can, where you can, um, do uber and do do uber eats do whatever food delivery and you can rent a car so i found this app thank god okay god always come through okay so i literally found this app and i was like okay i can work now i can work again after three weeks of me being inside i figured it out right so so okay this i could get some money in the meantime so I um I literally start doing that. So I would I would literally work, go back to my schedule program of work doing the food delivery. Um yeah. And still the same cycle, I could not save no money. Only had money for gas, food, Cindy food, and to paying off the rental. It was crazy. It was just like the same cycle. And mind you, during this time, me and the me and the guy that I met, we was getting really close, really cool, like really start really start liking each other, getting to know each other, really chill. Like he's really a chill ass person. I really fucked with him. Like and I thought that he really fucked with me, so um so it was just really chill and even like i feel like if he was like a if he was like a strange person or if he was like mean or if he was like there's not a, a you know if i didn't really fuck with him like that i would have left i would have left his house i would have been i would have left i'm an independent person as i told y'all i don't it depend on men I don't, I don't, um, expect, I didn't expect any, I was like, I didn't even expect him to let me go to his house, okay? I thought he was just going to pay for my storage and be like, okay, cool, bye. That's what I expected, literally, I swear to you. So, um, but he was really cool and really chill, starting to get to know him. And we had sex, we had sex. And we start, so in my head, okay, we're getting closer. We, and then he's like telling me, it was like, <laughs> oh my God. He's telling me, oh, we're going to, we're going to get a place together. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We really start like, it's just crazy. So, but during this time where I told y'all I was working, I was doing my, um, I was doing my, I was on the, Food delivery thing. Um, I literally was still. I. He was not helping me. He didn't say, "Here you go. Here's. Here's here's money. Here's your rental money, so you can pay for your money, so you can save up, so that you can, um, so you can get your apartment." It was like he was watching me struggle, bro. The whole time, watching me struggle, watching me struggle, watching me struggle, watching, watching me struggle. And he had the means to help me to do that. Not saying that he had to, but at this time we was having sex. We was hanging out, we was spending time together. I would still work and I would go see him. And some of the times, I had, even though I had my car, I had my car, I was still sleeping in my car. I didn't even sleep at his house. Like, so, 
it was crazy. It was just, it was like, damn, like this person, it was like, damn, we really watched me struggle. Like things could have been way easier. Like, you know, it's like, if you want to help me, help me. Don't breadcrumb me. Cause that's basically, that's basically what I was going through. It was like me working hard, struggling, um, still in during this time. And I wasn't completely stupid. Cause I would be like, I'm done. I would leave him. I would like be like, I'm done. I'm gonna just work. I'm gonna just do me. I don't care. I was doing me the whole time before I met him, right? So okay, I'm gonna just work, work, and just just be living this cycle that I was living in, with basically just sleeping in my car with Fendi, literally, or sleeping on the ground with Fendi. So, but he would always come. He would always be like, um, apologize to me, and you know. So then we be cool again. But same thing, still watch me struggle, still never help me, still never get like, like, okay, here's money for gas. Here's money for, um, to pay for your rental. Here's money to pay for your Airbnb for a month. And you work and save your money up so you could be good, be good, right? So it was never like that. And that, so, and that really hurt me so much because it's like during this time, this year, this year and a half that we've been dating and talking and like me trying, me figuring out my life and me building my life back up. And him, I'm thinking he's there to support me and to be with me and we want to eventually build a life right together while I'm, um, when I get back on my feet and stuff like that, but no. So he was literally watch. he was literally watching me struggle. Um. So then I had got this job I had got this other this job. It wasn't in the film industry though. It was for enterprise. So I got this job and then I was dealing with racism at the job. I was dealing with racism at the job, right? I was the only black woman, the only woman at the job. But so I was dealing with um racism and discrimination, right? So it was like I was dealing with that and I was dealing with being homeless. So that really overwhelmed me. I was very overwhelmed, very stressed very tired really talked to hr had meetings with hr did everything okay then i ended up suing them i sued i sued um enterprise and i won and i got a settlement so um so then so i sued them and I left that, so no, I left that job, right? I left that job. Mind you, I feel like he didn't even believe me that I what I was going through at work. Even from work, I would like have to get dressed in the car, put my makeup on, put my, literally how I got that job, I was doing three interviews. I did like three to four interviews to get this job. Um, had to get some work, get some, I had, I still had work clothes from my other job, like, um, office clothes from my from my other previous jobs in the past and I did my interviews at my like old old apartment in like the in like the study room literally got dressed like I should have recorded all that stuff but it's who wants to record that those sad things that's happening in life like no who wants to do that so um I literally would dress up in my car just to do the interview in the um in the study hall or whatever I'm about. um old, old apartment so yeah it was real like so i got the job everything but then i got this job and they started being racist and they started being discriminated against me because they was upset because i actually knew how to do the job like i'm a hard worker and I was on my ish and I feel like and my manager was really jealous of me, really hating on me. So anyway, I told you I sued them, did a settlement and won. So um so anyway, and during this time when I was going through that racism at my job and then I quit, I um my my the my boyfriend who I think is my boyfriend who who got me off the street right. 
his house something happened with his house something happened with the situation his house like a whole thing so i was really it was just like i was and then like my car um no i left my so when i left when i left that job was being racist towards me i couldn't pay my car note so i paid so i had out my car he didn't pay my car note he didn't help me stay afloat like he did not help me bro he did not help me so i lost my car we're just like yo you could really if you gotta struggle struggle with somebody is i would rather struggle by myself okay i would rather struggle by myself literally so and to go through all of that and somebody that you love who you begin to love and spend time with you really feel like they genuinely fuck with you and they genuinely want to see you win and they genuinely you think they genuinely want to see you um off the streets and that shit fuck with your mental it fuck with my mental like it really fucked with me for real it's like even though i deeply love this person like i really fuck with him because he helped me get off the street he took care of me he like i'm saying far as like made sure i ate made sure um he let me stay in his house like you know but i made me his head he's like i'm she giving me pussy so i'm gonna do this but i don't know i don't want to think that negatively but and mind you um i didn't stay in his house all the time because i would literally um I would literally sleep in my car still. So, and I was just still struggling and struggling and struggling. It was like, it was like, he was there. He was hot. Like, he was there for like, it was like breadcrumbing. Basically, I was just breadcrumbing the whole time. And maybe because his lifestyle or what, what he got going on, he maybe he felt like I was playing him or I didn't really love him. I, I don't know. But all I know, I was genuine as fuck, real as fuck. My feelings was real. Um, and I really was homeless. It's like, why would you fuck with somebody that's homeless already on their lowest of lows? Why would you fucking play with them like that? So, it just fucked my head up, bro. It really did. It fucked my head up. So, but like, I've never been in that situation where I depend on a man and they fuck me over and they fuck with me and they, they like, um, lie to me about the future what we gonna do and like no i literally get my shit out the mud do my shit on my own don't worry about no nigga for the shit okay do i want to be like that no i want to be able to rely on a man and me work hard they work hard and we build a life together okay but i would rather get my shit out the mud do my own shit than have somebody to fucking break on me and watch me struggle and play games with me play mind games with me and tell me that they love me and we gonna do this and we gonna do that and that shit and then i'm still struggling all this time and you can you literally can help me i'm not saying you gotta do so much but you could literally help me get me out this situation because you see my work ethic see my work as i was working fucking very fucking hard even when i was doing lifts i was working every fucking day all day 12 hour shifts all day just to make 200 dollars so, and then when I worked at Enterprise, working 10-hour shifts all day in the hot sun, okay? So, you can never say that I never was working when I was around home. I always worked the whole time. Did it pay me a lot of money? Fuck no. Did it get me out of the situation? Fuck no. Um, my last job, it, it could have if I kept going, but I was really going through so much. Like, being homeless... Having to do all this stuff, being homeless, and going to work and stuff like that, it takes a toll on your mental health, okay? It takes a toll on you, and you, and especially, and then you're with somebody who is not helping you at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, so, I left. So I lost my car. He didn't help me pay for my car note when I when I left in surprise. He didn't pay for my car note. He didn't pay he didn't help me pay my own um, my storage. So cause even if he could have helped me for the he could have helped me. Let's just let's just be real. Um he could have helped me but he didn't. And I feel like it could be because of his what he whatever he thought of me his perception he could have think that i was just lying about everything he could have thought i was finessing 
he just looked at me as this girl that just came from off the street, right? So, but it's like, it's so much to, to me. I have a bachelor's degree. I'm very intelligent. I'm not a whore. I keep my legs closed. I work very fucking hard. I have goals. I have vision for myself. Shit just happens in life. Like, I have an entrepreneur spirit. Like, I'm literally, shit just happens. Like, shit just went left. Things happen, okay? So, COVID happened, okay? That's what happened. COVID happened. I had a shitty ass fucking landlord. So, if things happen again, um, it's so many stories that about people who live in LA. Everybody know what LA is like. You gotta work fucking hard, okay? And even when you work hard, you can still end up being homeless. So anyway, um, so one day I was at his house. I was like at his house. I left. Um, I lost my car. The repo man got my fucking car. Um. He cursed me out, like, why would you Why would you leave your car out there? You could have left your car in the garage, um, so they won't take it. But he cursed me out, so, but they, like, they, they took my car, so now I feel stuck. I'm just at his house, stuck. He's not even near with me at his house, right? I'm stuck at his house all day, can't drive nowhere, don't have no money, can't go get food on my own, can't do nothing. I'm literally stuck, like... So, um, literally stuck, no cap. So, um, and then he just don't give a fuck. He's like, no, so nonchalant, don't give a fuck about shit, about what I'm telling him. So, and then there's one thing happened, it's happened so, I just got so freaked out. I can't even tell y'all about this, tell y'all what happened. So, I was like, I gotta fucking go, okay? I gotta go. So... Imagine robbers coming to your house. I'm not saying this is what happened. This is not what happened. Robbers did not come to the house. But I'm saying that's how freaked out I was. And I was like, I got to go. So, um, this I met this beautiful angel named Maria at work one day. And I hit her up. Um, I was like, can you please help me get a flight? Can you please help me get a flight to... um?" Philadelphia back to where I live because I'm going through it like I'm I'm homeless da 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 told her everything um told her that I'm homeless and stuff like that and I needed to get back to Philly so I went so she sent me the money I booked my flight um I didn't have enough for Fendi right because you know Fendi dogs it costs like 150 125 dollars to fly if you don't have them as an emotional support animal and I really need to um, register her as an emotional support animal, right? So then I can get on the flights for free. Because she really is an emotional support animal. Because I've really been through so much shit, okay? So this shit is just mentally, it just, like, I feel like him and him fucking with me. And, like, telling me that he loved me and cared about me. And just watching me struggle and breadcrumbing me. When I know that he is capable of helping me. When I know that he is capable of um get in an airbnb for a month um he's capable of he was capable of paying for my um my air my my um storage or helping me pay my car note until i find a new job like he was capable of th these things but then on the same time he's telling me he loved me he care about me he want to be with me he want to marry me he want to have children with me he want to do all this stuff and he's going to do this and do that like it really fucked with my head, like, the fact that I'm, it's just like, and it fucked with my heart because when I love, I love hard, and I'm a real ass bitch, and I have really integrity, and I'm real, I'm not going, like, I have respect and love for him still to this day, okay, so, because I really am grateful of even him even letting, picking me off off the street, and letting me stay at his house, and you know like all of that i have i love him and respect him and wish him well okay and he's doing he's gonna do well like regardless so um so i so i went back to i went back to philly right so now it's just so now it's like me going through all of that so now I haven't really been living in Philly. So now I haven't been living in Philly since 
for like 10, 11 years, right? So I don't really know. I don't have a car out here. So I don't really know where to go, what to do. Um, I don't really, like in my industry, my film industry is not even here. Um, everything is in like in New York, the big, the big city, New York, LA. That's where the film industry is, the entertainment industry. And in Atlanta too, not in Philly. So I feel like it's more music people here. There's more music people here, I would say. Um, probably like more music artists, like situations like that. But, um, so I just feel like, I'm so happy that I even talked about this stuff. I really needed to get this stuff out. I really needed to talk about this. Tell me how y'all feel about this. Am I wrong? Am I like, how, like, am I wrong to feel mentally drained and feel really, like, uh, exhausted of, like, my mental health? So, I'm just mentally drained. Like, that's what I'm mentally drained. That's what I am. Mentally exhausted, okay? So then I come to um, Philly, right? And all my, and people who I really love and care about really um, show their true colors, you know? really like and it's like if y'all really knew the fact like y'all really knew everything y'all like it's just like yeah so it's like if they knew what i knew i could see why they would i could see why people would be jealous of me hate me shit on me try to throw dirt on me because i'm really that bitch for real like if they knew what i knew because i'm still i'm still not being fully transparent of everything right um i am being transparent of everything but i keep people i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um say people names or none of that so because like who like you know mm -mm. you don't do shit like that you're like no but I just want to tell my story and what I've been through so that other women could like do things better. Do things better than me. And then so I can be able to release and release and say how I feel and say and hear myself, you know? But um so they all so a lot of my family just looking looking down at me, talking shit. Um, telling me, oh, what are you doing? Why are you sitting around? Why are you not doing nothing? Why this and why that? Um, not even realizing that. Not even giving me no grace. Not even asking me, so what's going on? Are you okay? Are you okay, Diana? Because mind you, they all knew that I was homeless. They all knew everything. I told them every fucking thing. They knew everything. So, before I even came to them, they knew my situation. I told them my situation. So, um, no grace, no fucking grace at all. Don't even know. It's like, have you even, they haven't even taken consideration that my industry is not even in this city. The sh my bachelor's degree, what, what I went to school with, that my industry is not even in this city, okay? So, they haven't taken take account of fact of what I've been through and, and, you know, that it takes time to find a new career, a career period. Um, it takes time. So, this is taking me talking hella shit. Mind you, I'm still doing my content. Because I still can make money from my content. I'm still doing my content. Just like I'm still doing my content right now. This is considered content. Um, I still have my tarot business. So, but I just haven't been given no grace, no empathy, no nothing. And it's okay. It's hurtful. It's fucked my head up. Um, as far as just disappointment and it's like damn disappointment off a disappointment off a disappointment like betrayal 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 but it's like it's life life goes the fuck on it is what it is I feel like God I feel like me coming to Philly during this time it was a beautiful thing because I got to see my I got to see all the kids grow up and how smart and intelligent they are creative they are and get to be in their life for this amount of time and see like I feel like that was my reason. I feel like that was God's reason of making me come to Philly right now to get connected with my little cousins, my like you know, and really, um, just really embrace them and love them and 
be there for them even if it's for this a little bit amount of time so because i really i i'm so and i um even if i don't really get along with their moms and stuff like that or i'm not really close with their moms i love them so much and i love i still love their moms and stuff but we just don't really get along um we really just not we don't really mesh and that's fine like i feel like you grow up things change in life like you grow up being close with somebody and with people and you get older and you don't you're not close and that's and it took me a long time to really be like to really grasp that idea that you really can grow you can really grow up with people and then grow apart and not mesh with the people that they are and things like that and I feel like the the biggest thing that happened in my life um, recently that a family member has done to me, I feel like I'm going to save that for another time because that shit is too deep, okay? That's way, it's so deep. But anyway, I feel like at this time, people, it's like, People going to talk shit about you whether you're doing good or bad, okay? But during those bad times, you know who is there for you, who really love you. And sometimes even the people that are there for you, they still don't really fuck with you. They I get so much love from pretty fly bitches. The, you know, the bum bitches be hating.